again, everyone, and welcome back to SFF 180. Thomas here, your host as always. Now, as some of you may know, I am not exactly what you'd call a godly man, but if I had one prayer, it might go like this. Lord, give me the confidence of a moron on the internet who cobbles together a half-assed argument to justify their bad behavior. Over the last week or so, there has been increased chatter on book Twitter about the appropriateness of tagging authors when you tweet reviews of their work, especially if those reviews are negative. Now, the consensus generally seems to be that it's downright rude to tag an author when you have panned their work, though opinions differ on whether you should tag them if you have written a total gush. My own policy is that I never tag authors in reviews, ever, period, positive or negative. If an author wants to see my review of their book, they are perfectly capable of finding it themselves, should they choose to. You can, of course, ask writers their own preferences. And for sure, some of them will say, they don't mind being tagged if you love their book, while others just prefer to be left out of the whole reviewing dialogue. But most people agree. If you have written a bad review, definitely don't tag. After all, reviews are for readers, not writers. Right? Yes, most of us agree on that very basic point of common courtesy, but, well, <laughs> you know where this is going. It's the internet, and you're always going to find that person. In this case, a that person is a columnist for Book Riot, a, a pretty respectable website. So it was bizarre to see an article posted there that mounts an impassioned defense for tagging authors in bad reviews only to support the entire stance with some of the most feeble arguments I have ever read. Now, I won't identify this writer, nor will I tag her, of course, because unlike some people, I don't think that there is some mystical virtue in being a douchebag. But I will link the article so you can read it in all of its silliness for yourselves. The writer, who sounds, to be perfectly honest, like a complete noob at this whole thing, leads by announcing that she doesn't think tagging an author in a bad review should be all that big of a deal. Although she understands, authors generally don't like it, and so out of respect for that, she doesn't actually do it. You'd think the entire conversation could end right there. But no! Like anyone with basic boundary impairment who thinks they have a boatload of amazing reasons why everyone shouldn't be so touchy just because they eat all their snacks out of the break room fridge and borrow their iPhones without asking. This writer goes on to explain herself, and really, it's cringe. First, she describes her approach to reviewing, a skill set she appears to have learned over the past week. First, when I write reviews, my goal is to describe the book and aspects of the book with adjectives and such that could help a potential reader determine whether that book would suit them. This means I don't go into a review and just write, this book sucked, or this book was amazing, and leave it at that, that's not helpful to anyone. Instead, I'll discuss whether the book's plot was action-packed or character-driven. I'll talk about whether the pace was fast or slow. I'll detail what the prose was like. And it's then up to the reader to decide if they're looking for one thing over the other in any of these categories. You are entitled to one cookie for mastering entry-level competence. She then goes on to concede a basic premise. Second, generally speaking, reviews are not for authors. They are for readers. While authors certainly might get something of value out of reading reviews if they choose to read reviews, I typically don't spend a few hours thinking about a book and then crafting a review for it for the sake of one person. I don't know anyone who writes reviews for the sake of the author, although I suppose at least a few people do. Blithely ignoring the fact that this concession essentially torpedoes any possible argument she could go on to make, she bravely sallies forth. And what ultimately does this writer's defense of tagging authors in bad reviews amount to? Apparently it's all about access to information? Third, I'm a librarian. I tag authors in reviews not to get the author's attention, but to make it easier for the audience to get more information. While many authors use the name under which they publish as their handle across various platforms, this isn't the case for all of them. It sometimes takes some hunting to track them down on social media. 
As someone who likes to know a bit about an author when I'm reading their book, I appreciate when reviewers can direct me to the correct person. I can understand why some authors might be hurt by negative reviews. Criticism is hard. I'm just not convinced that the risk outweighs the benefit here. Easy access to more information on authors is important to me, and authors are not required to read reviews. Most books don't fall within categories that are strictly positive or negative. Have another cookie for discovering the concept of the mixed review, a thing I think pretty much every author and publisher and reviewer has been cognizant of for quite a little while now. No, authors are not required to read a review. No one is forcing them to click any links. But think for a minute. You're an author. You awaken one morning to check your notifications on Twitter. You open it up to discover yourself tagged in a tweet by some Goodreads randos saying something like, Hey everyone, check out my one-star review of at author names bullshit ass new book. Well, good morning to you too, sunshine. Really, this whole idea that if you don't tag an author, everyone will have an incredibly difficult time finding information about them online? Hun, allow me to introduce you to your new online friend. I mean, we even live in a day and age when you can just talk into your phone and this amazing digital oracle will just find things for you. Look, I'll demonstrate. Brandon Sanderson. How about that? Thousands of results. Just think how lost I would have been if that one person hadn't tagged Brandon in her tweet about how Mistborn was so bad it made her spontaneously abort. Seriously though, let me just lay out some ideas to consider, just in case anyone is still even slightly unclear on this concept. It isn't just that it's rude, but as many authors have pointed out, getting tagged by a reviewer places them in a uniquely awkward situation in that in order to maintain professional decorum, they cannot respond. If you slag their work and they respond in a natural way that their feelings were hurt, then their most ardent fans are probably going to latch onto that and they might dogpile the reviewer, who is admittedly very stupid, with a mountain of social media abuse. It might then look to an uninvolved third party like the author had sicked their rabid fanbase upon a reader whose only crime was expressing an opinion. Or it might not look like that, but the author has to err on the side of caution and act as if it will, because social media outrage storms have a way of taking on their own life. The column ends on a truly silly note. The writer basically body surfs down a slippery slope fallacy. If we lean toward caution and decide against tagging authors in negative reviews, we can't tag authors at all. It's rare that any review worth anything doesn't mention anything that hasn't gone well in a book. In that case, authors are losing out on additional potential readers. Horseshit. There are, of course, instances in which one can appropriately tag an author. You can tweet your TBR for the month. Hey everyone, I'm gonna be reading such and such this week. Super excited. Authors love to know that their work is being read, at the very least, even if you don't go on to Tell them how you thought of it, or you can tag them in a book haul. Same thing. Not tagging them when you want the world to know how much they suck does not in any way impede you from doing it in any other context. And it's some truly bizarre logical pathways you have to take to convince yourself it's an all or nothing proposition. To claim that not being able to tag an author in one circumstance rules out all other circumstances makes you sound like like those stupid guys who pop up now and again in response to the Me Too movement, and they're acting all like, well, I guess I can just never so much as say a single word to any woman again as long as I live. Okay, yeah, dude. If your basic conversational skills are so inept that they're literally indistinguishable from sexual harassment, maybe not talking to women anymore is a good plan. People who aren't totally jacked in the head can generally tell the difference. Some people ask reasonably, but what if your review is chock full of constructive criticism? What if it's really sharp and on point? Well, let me just say once again that constructive criticism is kind of like sex. If somebody hasn't asked you for it, 
they probably don't want it from you. There is the kind of constructive criticism that authors solicit as a natural part of their writing process. It's why authors have agents and editors, alpha readers, beta readers, sensitivity readers. But what we mean when we say reviews are for readers and not for authors has to do specifically with the fact that the kind of critique that appears in a review for the general public is not the same kind of critique that an author gets from those sources. For one thing, reviews only appear when a book is finished and done and out in the cold, cruel world, and so there's no way any constructive criticism you have at this point would allow an author to go back and maybe make improvements. Secondly, a review, as Delilah Dawson has pointed out, is more about the personal impact of a book upon the reviewer. It's about how well or how poorly a book met that reviewer's expectations, satisfied or failed to satisfy whatever the reviewer was hoping for from the reading experience. Even if a negative review is written with consummate insight and analytical skill, it is still in most cases not the sort of constructive criticism that serves an author's creative process. So what does all this boil down to? Simple. Don't be a dick. Read what you want, love what you love, and hate what you hate. Trust me, every author worth the ink on their contract already understands that their books will not appeal to every possible reader. And so you're accomplishing nothing other than being a jerk by shoving your unwanted opinion in their faces. It's pointless and mean-spirited, however much your confused sense of self-importance makes you think you're doing them a favor. But that's just my take on all this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed watching, well then please leave a like, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits in the Winx Army get little perks like getting to see some of these videos early. I want to thank all of those wonderful folks for their additional support. It is extremely helpful. I want to thank all of you guys for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube, and until I see all of you next time, happy reading. <laughs>